All right, today we are looking at the second uh, David Hockney Make Day project. And again, I'm using my sketchbook, but you can use uh, Chrome Canvas or something like that if you like. I'm going to whoop, whoop, add my image that I'm going to work from today. And I'm going to start with a photo I took. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I think this is the one I wanted to use. Okay. So this is out behind my house. And um, let me turn the size down a little bit. So I'm not quite so large. <laughs> and I chose uh, this image, or I'm using this image, because it's a uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Get the little cockeyed there. I chose this image because it uh, has those vertical lines, those trees, and it's sort of a thicket like you might have seen in a David Hockney inspired painting. And I kind of like it that it had a little house sort of centrally located. And so we're going to start playing with, um, you know, sort of how we can create this, this Hockney esque, uh, you know, painting. And so, you know, first thing we want to do is consider how we're going to treat uh, lines and shape and color, those basic elements. And staying aligned with what Hockney would have done, we're going to use lots of primary and secondary colors. Uh, we're going to try to, though, um, keep it clean, not have those sort of overly bold, out of control, wild marks that those of us use, but more of a controlled sort of line. And I'm going to uh, mostly paint uh sort of directly onto uh this painting or this this photograph and so the first thing i want to do is is do a treatment on my sky and so i'm going to come up here and add a few layers to have something to work with and the first thing i want to do is i'm going to come up here and select from my tools something let's get my My favorite brush library open here. I'm going to go with a wash brush. And let's see. What do we want to do color wise here? And again, staying with that hot knee. And. Uh, I'm going to still choose sort of a a bluey sky, something like that. Let's go with a fairly bright. Uh, because I'm going to do my trees in those, uh, those oranges and, uh, and purples and such that Hockney might have used. And so I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing here, but I'm just laying down a little color. And the way this brush works is... If you see, it puts down a little bit of color right away, and then you can kind of move that color around, which is what I'm doing now. And so the reason I'm doing this is I want that blue background, but um, I want to be able to see all my pretty trees and all the lines that they're going to make. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, use a semi-transparent blue and keep adding it over and over again until... I get a background sort of blue that I like. And the other reason I'm using uh, this sort of method is I think it's cool to see those variations that we see in the clouds sort of coming through in the in this painting as well. Okay, last probably a little one here just to kind of get a little more color. All right. So I'm going to go with just another little, little more towards this. And I'm a big fan. That's too, too purple. I'm a big fan of laying over a layering. And so I'm going to do that. Particularly in this top part. All right. And how you do yours. Uh, you, you might lay your color down much differently than I am. Uh, you may not like. Uh, that what I call variegated surface where it's kind of uh, not all consistent. All right. 
Next thing I want to do is I want to kind of consider what's going to happen down here in this bottom space. And I'm going to grab a different brush, something a little, a little firmer. And I'm going to go with a bright green. And I'm just going to start laying in uh, some color down here. And I don't want to bring in that parking lot. I'm going to, I'm going to eliminate the parking lot in this. I'm going to get rid of that parking lot. All right. And so now I got a little layer of green here. And um, kind of what I want to do here, I'm going to smear that just a little bit because I kind of want to. I'm going to smear that out just a little bit. I want nice, smooth transitions here in these colors. And again, I'm just kind of getting rid of some of that detail that's under there, that parking lot and that sort of thing. And just putting in a little bit of base color. All right. Now we're start, uh, in this little area, kind of in between this green and that blue, is where some really cool uh, little foliage takes place. And I'm going to... Um, Oh, I want to hit the wrong button. I'm going to choose a bright orange to do this uh, this foliage. There, a dark orange first, and then I'll do a light orange. Let's actually do that a little darker, just a little. All right. And I want to go with sort of a texture brush because he would do these really cool textures, and and uh, you know we'd see. Um, those leaves and such. Let's check my size there. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to kind of fill this little space in here sort of with these textures. And I'm going to start to make these little the little foliage that sort of happens in between the uh, trees and I don't want to mess up my house too much. I'm gonna, come on, I think I'm going to keep that in there. I may not admit that. I think I'm going to keep it in. All right, then I mentioned I'm going to come back in with a lighter. All right, and there we go. Now I'm creating some of that texture that he might have recreated sort of in that middle ground. We looked at that painting where uh, it was the large landscape and we sort of took a look at how uh, he addressed um, some of those um, leaves with real delicacy there. Let's see. Let's lay in a little more of this green. And if you see what I did there, I kind of, kind of just brought that brought that green up just a hair. When I did so, um, it uh, also um, kind of created a little pathway, if you will, where maybe that green kind of sneaks up into that um, into that orange a little bit. And I've kind of gotten a little too bright. Let's draw that back a little bit. There we go. Find that middle ground. All right, and so now I've got my little field of green I'm getting kind of happy with, and I've got my my sort of orange that I'm content with. <clears throat> Before I start laying these trees, I'm going to go ahead and put in my my little uh, house back there. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to find a little bit of detail. I'm going to go there with kind of a small synthetic brush here, and I'm going to come over and where's my There we go. Okay. And I want something um, probably in that purple range, but dark 
for this roof of this little building. Whoops, that is way too big. Did you see how big that was? Unnecessary. And that's probably a little too bright. Let's go a little darker. There we go. And I'm creating that bright, sort of Hockney-esque color. Um, remember, we kind of sort of compared him to those Favis for that uh, use of that use of color. Not so much the brush strokes, but that use of color. All right, and then I'm going to use a different uh, sort of real light. And I'm going to go a little towards this sort of burgundy range to create the actual little house there. Ooh, that is awful. That's an ugly color. Let's get rid of that. And let's go. There we go. That's what we're looking for. From that burgundy range. Let's let it be darker. All right. Now it's darker, so we see the contrast with the roof line, but it's still bright. It's still got that uh, intensity that we want that's kind of reminiscent of what we saw in Hockney's work. All right, and then the last thing I want to do, now that I've kind of got that color in there, is I want to just pop in a little bit of detail. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that, is with my little pen tool. Come up here and choose my pen tool. I'm going to go fairly dark. Sort of almost to the black, but still in that same range. Turn that size way down. And if you can tell, all I've really done is just make a couple little marks <coughs> that help us recognize that that is a that's a building back there. And because I'm going to end up losing a lot of this as I start to now bring in my my trees, so I like using this pen tool, particularly as um, I'm going to use it to create these trees. I don't want them really big, but. So now I'm going to go pick my bright orange that I really like. Let's go with those yellow oranges. Something really nice. So let's go with a bright orange. All right, let's try that. Turn my size up just a little bit so I can. There we go. All right, I like this. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of make these trees a little larger than they really are. Awesome.
So if you saw me turn that layer off, that's what I'm going to do at the end. So we can kind of see how these paintings look without that photograph going on in the background. All right, and I kind of like that tree. I'm going to put another one of those orange ones over here. And I'm going to change the colors up of my trees a little bit, much like Hockney did. And so that we have some good variation. Uh, not everything's going to be exactly the same. All right. And think about how you're going to use those complementary colors, uh, maybe some analogous colors. Think about those color schemes and what what would David have done? What would his what was his thought process? How would he have done things maybe differently than you're doing them? And that's okay. You don't have to do things exactly like David Hockney did. Did we want to find uh, David Hockney inspired works of art? So if you take the concept and run with it a little bit, that's absolutely fine too. In fact, uh, that's kind of cool. That's how a lot of artists develop their style. Uh, it works the same way with uh, most art styles. Uh, people who develop a dance style generally start off studying uh, traditional styles of dance, of course, and then they go, hey, I thought something new. And so that's how David and other Artists traditionally work. Okay, I'm going with a bright yellow. I'm going to try some yellow trees here. And again, I'm not trying to be perfectly representational of what all the trees I see, but I do want to include all those lines and recreate as many of those implied lines that stretch up into the sky and that. I create that vertical eye movement that uh, was prominent in David Hockney's work. And I know I'm probably running over time and you all are like, do we have to do this all day? Uh, if you are on yours and you're, or you're working, you're free to go always once you get started. But um, I do want to see some really cool David Hockney inspired works of art. I think uh, this is an opportunity. Uh, sort of like the uh, Andy uh, Goldsworthy to do something unique. Uh, something different than we might normally do, and and um, we'll come over here and get some of those wild colors. Let's do some. Oh, I like that purple I just had. Where it go? That's it. All right, I'm getting close to uh, a place where I'm going to sort of take a step back and look and see uh, how close I'm getting maybe. Um, and I'll probably stop here for the day in a few minutes just so you all can uh, say you stayed through the whole meeting. Uh, I know some of you all pride yourself on making it to class and boy, is that awesome. Um, and I'm hoping you're having fun making some art. You know, um, I got into art because I liked teaching kids something I thought was fun, something that I thought would give reason to stay in school and do fun things. And so um, 
I hope you like doing something like this. Maybe we'll find, maybe this isn't the project that you like most, but hopefully before this semester is over, you'll find one project, two projects to go, oh, I really like that. That David Hockney painting. I really like doing that Faith Ringgold quilt. That was really cool. Okay, so let's turn this off and just kind of see how we're coming with it. <coughs> I like it. I don't have nearly enough trees, of course, yet. That's coming. I'm going to turn these back in here. And I'm going to start going crazy with my trees. And let's have some bright red ones. Cool red ones. There we go. The other thing I'm going to do is I noticed that my background doesn't pop like I really wanted it to once we take that uh, that away. Let's see. I want all these red trees kind of coming up front here. A couple of these red trees. And so if you can see what I'm doing when I put a red tree or any tree there in front of that little building, I move it back in space. And so let's move this one back in space. There we go. All right, now I'm going to pull one of my layers oh, here, and I'm going to go with. Oh no, that's terrible. Wrong brush. Oh, what's a, a chisel marker? That's not what I was looking for. I guess this is why I keep my brush palette open all the time. All right, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right, now this is already getting better. All right. So this is slowly becoming my Hockney inspired painting. I don't like I took too much away on my last day. Um, so this is sort of my mine, and it's coming along. Uh, yours, obviously, is going to look different than this. Uh, but you see what you kind of want to do here. Create a uh, background, add very colorful trees, verticals going up. Have some sort of mid-ground. And one, one thing I'll probably come back to is work a whole lot on this middle ground. And then you want a foreground. So you've got those uh, different layers that Andy worked with. You want those vertical lines and that sort of thing. All right, that's our make day. I look forward to seeing your Hockney-inspired paintings.